Good evening and welcome to the Bible study tonight. We're glad to have you with us. And uh, we're going to be in uh, 1 Kings tonight, 1 Kings chapter number 22. And before we get started, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the service and uh, be, with the, be with us as we study the Word of God. Lord, we pray that you bless your Word and that, God, we know that your Word will not return void, but accomplish the purpose whereunto it is sent. And Lord, we ask you now to be with us as we endeavor to teach and preach your Word. I pray, God, if there's anybody out there tonight under the sound of my voice, Lord, that uh, you will touch their heart. You will use these words, the words of the living God, to minister to them, to lift them up, to encourage them. Give me liberty to be able to teach and preach. And Lord, as the Bible says um, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 4, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, to be instant in season and out of season. And Lord, we pray, God, that that would be the case tonight. The Spirit of God would move in and have free course. And we, Lord, we ask these things now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, coming to you by way of uh, the States and uh, trying this set up so you'll have to bear with me with the, um, uh, with the lighting and the sound and all those things, uh, just doing the best we can to uh, uh, get a message across the airwaves. All right, so uh, if you will, take your Bibles and open to 1 Kings chapter number 22 tonight. We're going to look at one man who, st- who stood against the multitude. One man who stood against the multitude. And uh, the subject tonight is going to be uh, one man who stand, stood against the multitude. Here in 1 Kings chapter 22, let's begin to read. The Bible says, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together about 400 men and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? So Jehoshaphat was getting a bit suspicious when 400 of them had the same voice and same message. And he should be. Verse 8, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, And that's where we get our text tonight. One man who stood against the multitude. There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Ah, there we go. There he is. There's the modern day Christian that wants to, to be, to hear fluff in his ear and not to hear the truth. And he said, I, I don't want him, he, he, I hate him. And uh, that matches uh, the Bible. In Amos chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, They hateth him that speaketh uprightly and reproves in the gate. And for he doth not prophesy good concerning me. See, it's selfish. He wants it to be about him. But evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Verse 9, Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel said, uh, And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chena, made him horns of iron. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou hast consumed them. And the prophet and all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. Oh, there's that prosperity gospel. And prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, 
the words of the prophets. See, he's trying to, he's, this is your backstage fella. And he's behind the scenes saying, hey, you need to behave yourself when you get before the king and you make sure you say the right things. And he says, behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. You see, he's trying to, to, to set him up like he did the others. You say, what's that? Getting man to tell him what to preach. That's a big problem. Amen. In verse number 14, And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Amen. So he came, verse 15, to the king and said unto the king, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall we forbear? And he, answered, and he answered him, go and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, I think the, uh, he said it obviously in the text, it looks as though he said it sarcastically and the king picked up on the sarcasm. In verse 16, and the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? See, what he was doing is um, he's saying, you want to show and you want me to say the, the, the stuff just like the other prophets? I'll do what you say. I'll, I'll, I'll go along with that. And he put on a big play and a big production. The king got annoyed. Verse 17, and he said, I saw all Israel. Here's Micaiah prophesying. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Oh boy. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I, he, you, want it, you want it? You want both barrels? He's going to give it to him right here. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a lowercase, a spirit, and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Remember in the last days that we live in, the book of uh, John, the Bible says that uh, one John, that in the last days there's going to be seducing spirits and uh, actually in Timothy and doctrines of devils. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, verse 22, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Notice it's his prophets, not God's prophets. It says his prophets. Say, why? They must be on Ahab's payroll. They belong to him. Yeah. And uh, they're doing what he says. They're not the Lord's uh, prophets. They're his prophets. Uh, and he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And speaking to the king again, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenai, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to thee to speak unto thee? Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see it in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Am Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison. That's what you get for being a true preacher and giving God's message. You say, what is it? There's not uh, uh, Rolls Royces and Cadillacs and Ferraris waiting for you when you finish out of that pulpit. You say, what's at the end? A prison, a prison. And they'll lock you up for telling the truth. You say, where was John the Baptist? They locked him up. Where was Jesus? He was hauled off to jail. Where was Paul? Same. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? As a matter of fact, you, you do. And it get your head cut off, get you thrown in prison. And here, uh, and in Jeremiah's case, got him thrown in prison and in the cellar down there in the bottom, in the, in the dungeon. And here, in verse 26, and the king of Israel said, or 27, and say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with the bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And boy, Micaiah couldn't resist. He had to get one more in here. 
And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went to, up to Ramoth Gilead. Let's see if his word comes to pass. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle and put, on, put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had rule over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host. For I am wounded. So what happened to Ahab? The arrow hit the mark. And at a, at, a, at a venture, he drew it at a venture. You say, who was behind that arrow? God. And the Bible says, in verse 35, And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians, and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And that's the way... That's the way that story goes there in the, in the Word of God. And so I want to show you today how, uh, and we want to look at this, one man, this one man. You say, who is this man? Micaiah. Well, I, I tell you, he's one of my heroes of the faith. He's one that I look to, and even at, uh, at peril of his life and limb and uh, getting cast into prison, you say, what happened to him? Uh, he stood and told the truth. What a great example we have in the Scriptures, Amen. And uh, King Ahab, you say, what did he want? He wanted to recover Ramoth Gilead. So he called Jehoshaphat here in the text to help him in the battle. Jehoshaphat at least still feared God and asked Ahab to inquire of the Lord before undertaking the battle. So Ahab called together his 400 prophets, and I say his because we saw it in the text uh, in verse 22, uh, 1 Kings 22, 22, it says it's his prophets, and that's what it was. Um, uh, he must have replaced, if you go back to 1 Kings 18, uh, where Elijah slew the 400 prophets of Baal, you say, what did he do? He must have replaced those 400. And um, you say, what did they do? So I guess they wanted uh, a job, and he said, they're hiring. So he put them to work and got him 400 more yes men. And, um, and so these 400 prophets um, stood before the two kings, and they said, yep, go to battle and you'll prosper. And you say, what happened? That was a lying spirit, um, and that was that that came from the Lord. That came from the Lord. These false prophets are there. They were under the same inspiration. You say, what was it? The the, in, the inspiration that they were under was a lying spirit, and that that lying spirit was there. Told them to go forth. You say, why? Because King Ahab was out of the will of God, was doing wrong, and uh, didn't want to listen to God. You'll get yourself in trouble. And they assured him that go up and it'll be delivered into the hand of the king in verse 6. And the king, then the, kings of, uh, the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. But that wasn't the case. So Jehoshaphat, of course, he was um, suspicious and asked for a prophet of the Lord. Amen. A good man can tell when something's not right. When something's not adding up, something's not right, uh, there'll be some alarm bells and red flags and uh, 400 men agreeing with each other. Something's wrong. Something's going on. Uh, beware when all men speak well of thee. When you got all, all of them yes men and, and prophesying good and not one out of the bunch in, a, in objection, some, something's going on there. And Jehoshaphat sniffed it out. And so he asked about and said, there, we need a prophet from the Lord in verse 7. And so Ahab called from Micaiah. And he said, there's yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Emma, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. And there was just one man he could think of who would give him the word of the Lord concerning this attack. And so I want to look at this man, Micaiah. I want to look at some of his characteristics and some things you can learn as a child of God, how you can stand and how, what you can do. And so the first thing I noticed about Micaiah, uh, this one man, was he knew the word of God. He knew the word of God. Amen. 
He knew the word of God in 1 Kings chapter 22, and look at verse 8. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, but whom may, we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And so there was no question even to Micaiah's enemy, even to his enemy, he knew he was true to the word of God. Praise the Lord. Would to God that the enemies that you have still know that where you stand and what you say is still the word of God. Amen? And he knew the word of God. Uh, look at verse 19. Go down to verse number 19. Uh, the Bible says, and he said, Hear thou therefore the what? The word of the Lord. Amen. And he tells him the, what the word of the Lord says all the way down to verse 22. He tells him that. And then look again at verse number 28. And Micaiah said, If thou return it all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. He was a man of the scriptures. He was a man of the word of God. And when the Lord spoke, he listened. He carried the message. And when he spoke, he said, Thus saith the Lord. And men trembled because they knew he was telling the truth. Are you that way? Can you, can you say, the, along with Micaiah, that uh, can you be that one man who stood against the multitude? Man, I tell you, Micaiah, he stood as one man against the multitude. He stood against that wicked king Ahab. He stood against, against all the bystanders. He stood against that guy behind the backstage there trying to prep him to go out and lie and, uh, and say along with uh, the rest of them. You see, the majority is not always right. Amen? Uh, most of the time, the majority is wrong. And you better, get, you better get on board with that. You better understand that. So you stand for Jesus Christ and you stand for the word of God, you're going to be in the minority. And you're going to stand alone sometimes. And that's okay. You say, why? The apostle Paul, they thought he was traveling alone back to Rome on that boat. And he said, no. Nope. He said, I got the Lord standing by me, whose I am and whom I serve. Amen. Never alone when you've got the Lord Jesus Christ. I like that song. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Amen, amen. And so he knew the word of God. Micaiah truly knew what God said. When someone you know needs a person who can answer for the Lord, be that person. That when they need an answer from the Lord, uh, are they going to come to you? Can they trust you that you're going to deliver that answer? I hope you can. I hope you're, the, you're one of those that um, can stand for the word of God and that uh, you, can, you can say, thus saith the Lord, and go right to that King James Bible and find uh, the help uh, in time of need. Help to those sinners around you. Help to the family. Uh, help to those ones that are uh, looking to know how to get to heaven when they die. Amen. He knew the word of God. He was a student of the word of God. Uh, look at 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. The Bible says there in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. says this, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Uh, it's better when you give the word of God, it won't return void. So, you learn that Bible, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You put that word of God in your, in your eyes and in your ears and in your heart and it comes out your mouth and it can minister to somebody. It can help them. But do you know it? Can you find the places that'll help? Do you know those promises? I pray that you do. Micaiah, you know how he was able to stand? Because he knew the word of God. I'm glad we've got that old King James Bible, amen. I'm glad we can hold it in our hands. When we hold that book in our hands, we don't worry and say, I wonder if we really do have the Bible. We know we've got the living words of the living God. Amen? We don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder. We can say with absolute authority. We can say with absolute certainty, thus saith the Lord. Not like these uh, stooges that go, well, um, in this uh, text and that text, and they're always stumbling over their words. And if you question them on it, they're not sure that that's even the word of God. What a sad life to live. The sad life to live. 
I put my, I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ based on the words of that book. You say, what are you trusting? I'm trusting the Lord Jesus Christ with my soul, and I got that from the words of this book. You say, is it important? It's important. You better know that book in your hand is the right book. You better know that that is the Word of God. Micaiah, he knew the Word of God, and he gave it out. Amen. You say, what else do we see about um, this one man who stood against the multitude, this Micaiah? He was absolutely hated. <laughs> so I want to sign up for the Lord, and and uh, I want to I want to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ, and and man, I want the accolades and I want the praise. You're getting you're signing up for the wrong thing. To uh, to serve the Lord is a life that uh, when you stand for the Word of God, it's a place that you're going to be hated for. Uh, in one Kings chapter twenty two, uh, in verse number eight, the Bible says. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. You know what's going to happen? You stand for the word of God, people are going to hate you for it. They're going to hate your guts when you say, uh, Thus saith the Lord. When you've got a family member and, and they say, Well, you know, I'm, I'm uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm trying this, relationship out and me and this this gal and this this lady say what are we going to do we're just going to live together for a little while and we're going to see if it works uh and you say well the bible says that that is fornication you're not supposed to live together and be together in a relationship uh that's unholy before marriage the bible calls it holy matrimony not unholy and uh and boy you're talking about making an enemy they'll hate you for it they'll hate you for it when you tell them this isn't right, you're supposed to get married first. You're not supposed to be together and come together until marriage. And you say you want to upset people? That'll upset people. That'll upset them. Amen. When you call out and you call sin, sin. And you say, no, that's that's right, that's wrong. And they'll hate you for it. You don't you don't generally you don't uh, generally try to get in on the bad side of the king, but Micaiah did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you go before the king and you go before the authorities and you try to behave yourself, but he had the word of God uh, and he wasn't going to be a flunk. He wasn't going to be a yes man. He was going to be a truth teller. He was going to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was one man that stood and he was hated for it. If you stand for that Bible, I'm not trying to paint any rosy pictures and make you feel good and warm about yourself. If you stand for that Bible, people are going to hate you for it. Your family, yep, they're going to hate you for it. Your friends, possibly going to hate you for it. As a matter of fact, I've lost many friends over the years because of my stand on the Word of God. And where I stand with, where the best I can, I stand with Jesus Christ. And I stand with that Bible. And you say, the best I can? Yeah, the best I can. Because I fall short sometimes. But the book's always right. And I stand where the book stands. Amen. And that book, they hate that book, this world does. And you say to some Christians, some Christians will hate you for standing. You say, yeah, some save people. They'll hate your guts because you stand on the word of God. And that's okay. You better prepare for it. Amen. And um, here, Micaiah, he didn't want to get on the bad side of the king necessarily, but he was known to tell the truth. And you're going to have to decide, is it going to be King Ahab from the world that you're trying to please or King Jesus? Amen? I want to please King Jesus. You're going to be like Micaiah and be a friend of God, even if that means that your earthly king will hate you? Boy, if you could, you'd like for your earthly king to love you and to be a, be a friend of the king and be uh, pals with him. But if it means you've got to compromise on the word of God, no thank you. I'll stick with King Jesus. Amen? Jesus said this, turn over there to uh, hold your place in Kings, but look at 1 John, chapter number 15, or sorry, John, just the book of John, chapter 15. John, chapter 15, look there. John, chapter 15, and verse number 18. The Bible says in John, chapter 15, and verse 18, If the world hates you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. Amen. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Look at that next verse there. It says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. 
but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. You say, well, the world doesn't hate me. Yeah, maybe you're too much like them. Maybe you won't open your mouth for Jesus Christ and take a stand for Jesus Christ. I know plenty of folks like that. And the Lord says in one place, he said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you. Boy, oh boy, I don't want that to be the case. I want to stand on the words of God. I want to stand for the truth. Amen. Remember O Ahab? He's mentioned here in the text. He didn't like Elijah. He hated Elijah too. So you see a pattern starting to form here. Uh, you say when Elijah was there, he hated him. And he hated, he hated Micaiah as well. Both, both texts, you can read that. The closer you get to God, the further you are to get from the world. The Christian life is not supposed to be a popularity contest. The Bible says that God called us out to be a peculiar people. You know, I've said before that uh, this brother or that brother or this sister, you know what you get in the Christian life and, and brothers and sisters, we've got them in our church, amen? You say, what do you got? You got some weirdos. But, and you got some, uh, my pastor said the other night, he said, you got some nuts. And at least we're all from the right tree, amen? And, uh, and we got some, some crazy people, as the world would say, and, and even strange. But the Bible says you're supposed to be peculiar, supposed to be different. You're not supposed to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, think like the world. You're supposed to put that stuff away and walk in the spirit, amen? Walking away from that. You say, what about what else do you see about Micaiah? I saw that uh, I see in the text in 1 Kings chapter 22, back there, I can see he could preach evil. You say, what does that mean? He could preach the negative. He could preach the truth when it came down to it, the hard stuff that there is to preach. He didn't shy away from uh, the hard truths that are out there. And uh, 1 Kings 22, 8, it says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Evil. Oh, this preacher, he's negative. He's negative. All he ever talks about is sin. All he ever talks about is hell. All he ever talks, yeah. And people want their ears tickled this day and time. They want to be, they want to be uh, around a place that uh, is preaching healthy, wealthy, and wise. They want an ear tickling. They don't want the truth anymore. And it's a sad day that we live in, but that's the case. That's the case is uh, where, where, where we are today. You say, what do you want? Uh, what does the, the world want? What does uh, Ahab want? He would have been just fine with the Joel Osteens of the world. That will tickle your ears and take your money and be, be um, um, smiling your soul straight into hell. You got to watch out for guys like that, though. Look at verse 18, 1 Kings 22 and verse number 18. It says there, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? There's another thing to pick up on as well. That's wrong with this day and time. You know, when you go to church and when you go up preaching, it's not always about you. When you go to church and, and when you talk to the Lord, you're supposed to worship him in spirit and in truth. When you go to church, it's not always supposed to be about you. You say, who's it supposed to be about? You're going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth. When was the last time you went to church on a Wednesday night, on a Sunday, on a Sunday night, and you went to church and you said, what'd you go for? So that I could so that you, so you say, so that I could worship God, the service to be about God, that it be lifting up Jesus Christ. Would you come thinking, oh man, I need this and I need that and uh, it's, it's about me and uh, nobody shook my hand and me, 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 my, 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 me and my and I. Boy, oh boy, that's the spirit of the age we live in. You have to overcome that. You say, what happened? You come looking for God and you say, you'll get what you need when you go to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And you go to, to meet with God and talk to the Lord and, and love him and worship him. The Bible says, let all the saints adore him. Amen. Let all the host of heaven adore him. When was the last time you came to church and just, just sat there and 
hands together and adored the Lord, just worshiped in the beauty of holiness. Boy, my, oh, my. But you know what people do? There's no good concerning me. He doesn't say anything good about me. He said something good about the kitchen staff, and he said something good about the, the, the street preachers. But I come every Sunday and set up the chairs, and he doesn't say anything good about me. Ah, so you see, you're revealing yourself. You're revealing yourself that the service is about you and not about God. And more about what you can do for God instead about serving, instead about God himself. And getting to know the Lord and, and fellowshipping with him. And see, here's what, what's what happened with Ahab. It was all about me and mine. Look at uh, Romans chapter 16. You say, you got to call out Joel Osteen in different names? Yeah. You say, why? The Bible commands me as a preacher to warn them, warn my church, and to warn God's people about certain men uh, that are coming in unawares, that are, that are uh, going to hurt the saints. Uh, look there in Romans chapter 16 and verse number 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they are such that serve not for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words, aha, and fair speeches, not even preaching, fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Deceive the hearts of the simple. And that's what those 400 prophets of his were doing. They were deceiving the hearts of the people because they wouldn't say anything negative. They wouldn't say anything negative. A true preacher preaches about good and evil. He says things positive and he says things negative. He's about, if he's balanced, amen. He's gonna preach about heaven and he's gonna preach about hell, amen. And you need to hear about heaven and hell. You need to hear about life but you also need to hear about death. Amen? You need to hear about the streets of gold, but you also need to hear about the lake of fire. Amen? You need to hear about salvation, and you need to hear about sin. You need to hear about the wrath of God and the rewards of God and the losses of God. You need to hear about mercy and judgment. And you can keep going and going and going, but there's always a negative and positive with that thing. And you don't want somebody that's always positive, 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 positive. Say, why? They'll preach you straight into hell. And it's, it's sad, but that's going on all over the world. And you'll be, uh, and that's a good thing about, if you're going to stand up like Micaiah stood up, and it was one man who stood against the masses and against the multitude, but he knew how to preach the negative as well as the positive. Amen. Micaiah's prophecies were so contrary to Ahab's wickedness that when Micaiah sarcastically imitated the other prophets, Ahab knew immediately that he wasn't speaking the truth. Look at verse 12. And the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord, for the Lord shall deliver it to the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king, with one mouth let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered unto him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. <laughs> and he picked it up straight away that he was being, uh, behaving foolishly like a jester in the court and he picked it up. And you say, why is that? Because Micaiah was serious about the things of God. And when he broke character uh, and what he really was to, to behave like, that, uh, like the rest of the prophets, he picked it up straight away. He knew that this fellow was different. And the world would pick that up as well. Amen. You say, what else do you see about this man, Micaiah? He was trusted of the Lord. He was trusted of the Lord. Look at 1 Kings 22 there, verse number uh, 13 and 14. The Bible says, And the messenger that was gone to Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them. 
and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Amen. Even when that messenger and that handler back behind the scenes tried to convince Micaiah to compromise and preach like all the other guys, Micaiah responded, As the Lord liveth. Amen. As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Uh, I've had preachers invite me along to preach in places and say, now you be, now they didn't say it just like this, but you be a good little boy and don't preach on this and don't preach on that. And I say, no, thank you. Not interested in that uh, proposal. I say, why? Not interested in preaching uh, with chains attached to me, with strings attached. I'm not interested. I'll preach what God tells me to preach. As the Lord liveth, I'll say what God wants me to say. And if a preacher doesn't want me to do that, don't, don't welcome me in your pulpit. Don't ask me to preach for you. Because if you ask me to preach, I'm going to preach what God lays on my heart, what God shows me from the scriptures. Amen. And there's plenty of charlatans out there that they can get. There's 400 of them. The majority, just go pick and throw a rock any direction, and you can get somebody that will preach what you want them to preach. But you want a pastor and a preacher that will stand up like Micaiah and put his finger right there and say, Thus saith the Lord. Whether it upsets you, whether it upsets the church, whether it bothers the givers and the tithers and the people there that, that are the money and the rich, doesn't matter. So you'll run off the, the givers if you preach like that. Bye-bye, because we're going to preach the truth. And I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. And you ought to be the same way. Tell the truth at, at, at your own peril and at uh, the expense of your own life if it comes to it. Tell the truth. Preach the truth. That's the exact kind of preacher God is looking for. Paul knew that the Lord had trusted him with the gospel in the same way. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, turn over there and look there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And verse 4, the Bible says, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. Amen? Look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. 1 mm -hmm. Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. 1 Timothy 1, 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Amen. There was a lot of pressure brought to bear upon Micaiah by the other prophets and particularly by, by Zedekiah. Because you got this man down here acting a fool saying, saying, oh, this is the way it's going to be. And say, what happened? Micaiah had to call him out by name. We have to do that sometimes. From the pulpit, we have to call men out by name that are charlatans, that are deceivers, that are false apostles. Amen. And then people get upset and they, they leave. Oh, you don't talk about this and that. Well, that means you don't believe the Bible because the Apostle Paul called out Hymenaeus and Alexander and said, they did me much evil. The Lord reward them according to their works. And, and he called them out by name. It's a biblical thing. And people don't like that. It makes them upset and uncomfortable. Well, that's what the Bible says to do. How do you know if you don't tell them? How will God's people know? How will the sheep know if you don't tell them plainly? See, we believe in plain preaching uh, at Open Bible Baptist Church. Amen? We believe in plain talk and plain speech, not dancing around. We're not interested. Uh, people oh, I'm gonna get upset and these people are going to leave. Bye-bye. We're not here to tickle your, your ears. You want your ears tickled? There's 40, 40 churches uh, within 20 kilometers that will tickle your ears. You want the truth? We're going to stand for the truth and deliver the truth. Amen, as God gives it to us. We're not going to veer from it because there's peer pressure. And Micaiah had the peer pressure on him, but he was trusted of the Lord. The Bible says, a faithful man who can find? A faithful man. And Micaiah, he was faithful. He was trusted of the Lord. God gave him a message, and he didn't mar that message. He didn't, he didn't change that message. He gave the message as God gave it to him. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. That's what being a Bible believer is. Amen. There was a lot of uh, peer pressure there, but Micah didn't break under it. 
You'll find many preachers who will preach based upon the company they keep. You say, what do you mean? They're very much like my. They're very much uh, unlike Micah and the apostles. They're 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 like these four hundred. They'll preach according along their denominational lines. They won't step outside of that. Even when God shows them something different, they'll stay right in line. The Calvinists will just keep spouting Calvinistic doctrine. The hyper dispensationalists will keep throwing that hyper dispensationalist stuff out. And uh, people who don't rightly divide. Oh, it's just the same way from Revelation, Genesis to Revelation. No, it's not. Not if, you, not if you've got any uh, um, uh, sense in your head. When you read that Bible, uh, Adam and Eve didn't get saved the same way we got saved today. There's a difference. There's things that are, and things that are different are not the same. I'm not brainwashed into that cult that thinks that salvation is the same in every age and every way. Somebody taught you that. The Bible didn't teach you that. Amen? And you better get a hold of that. Salvation uh, by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. That doesn't match the Old Testament. That matches the New Testament under, under uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, under Paul's gospel. That doesn't match Matthew 24. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. That doesn't match. That's not my gospel. Matthew 24, 13 and he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. That's not my gospel. My gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, how that Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I'm not quoting that exactly right. I'm just, I'm just pointing you to the reference. But they're not the same gospel. You better study it. You better get it right. Amen. It's called rightly dividing. Now, um, you'll see that Micaiah wasn't a, a man pleaser. He wasn't a man pleaser. He was trusted of the Lord, and that means that you're going to be hated by men, and uh, you're going to be disappointing man every time you turn around. Uh, look at Acts chapter 4, verse number 19. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter number 4. And verse number 19. The Bible says, But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. They said, we're going we're gonna to speak out and say those things. Look at verse 20. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, verse number, um, where are we at? Verse, uh, chapter 5 and verse 29. Going down a little bit next chapter. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And not to be a man pleaser. Amen? Not to be a man pleaser. You know that there were many Pharisees who believed Jesus, but they couldn't confess him because they were afraid of ridicule and rejection by their peers. Look at John chapter 12. Hold your place in Kings. We'll come back there. John chapter 12. Let's read this verse really quickly. John chapter 12 and verse 42. John chapter 12 and verse 42, the Bible says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You get another reference there in Galatians 1.10 says there in Galatians 1.10, if I, if I should be the servant of men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And you better, you better make up your mind who you're going to serve, men or God. Micaiah was not like that uh, group of preachers that were there. He was trusted by God. He was trusted of the Lord. The next thing that I notice, and the last thing I say in, uh, in finishing, is uh, of 1 Kings 22 and verse 26, he was right. You say, well, that's obvious, yes, because he was on the Lord, but he was right. Uh, you, say, you say he stood, and he was just one man. One man who stood against the multitude. You're going to be like Micaiah? I hope you are. You say, why? He was right. He was right. You know what some people have said to me before? They say, you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? I say, yeah, I do. I don't ever bat an eye. And I don't say that in pride. I don't say that with arrogancy. I say that because... If I stand where God stands, I know I'm right. I know I'm right because God's word doesn't change and God doesn't change. And if God's right, 
then I'm, I, you say, I'm not first in line. I'm hiding behind the Lord because I'm right because he's right. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 26. Look what the Bible says. And the king of Israel said, Take Micah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micah said, If thou return it all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. See what happened? He told the truth. And it got him imprisoned. It got him imprisoned. Or at least sentenced. Uh, we don't read that he was in prison or what happened there afterwards. Is, uh, if the sentence was carried out, he didn't come back in peace. So uh, I guess that was a life sentence. I don't know. I guess it, uh, you have to study on that a little more and see. But uh, he's either there for, for the long haul. Uh, and all the prophets who prophesied of that day, Micaiah was the only one who was right. You say, why? Because he had God's words. That's because he stood firm on the word of the Lord and not on anything else. Not on the opinions of man, not on science so falsely so-called, not on politics. He stood and he was right because he stood where God stood. Amen? And you can be right too. You can be right uh, about heaven. You can be right about hell. You can be right about the gospel. You can be right about prophecy when Jesus returns. You say, why? Just stand where God stands. Stand where that Bible stands. Amen? He stood on the word of the Lord. Anytime you stand on the prophetic words of God himself, no matter how much pressure they bring, no matter how hard they push, no matter what they do to you, if they pull your fingernails out, if they slander you, if they betray you, you're still going to be right. And they'll be wrong. They were wrong about Jesus being the Messiah. They thought he wasn't. They were wrong about the resurrection. The world was. And they were wrong about his return. The old preacher said this. You and God make a majority in your town. Amen. You make a majority not only in your town, but at your work and with your family. You say, you say, where do you get that from? Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. See, if you're standing with the Lord, you've got the majority. You don't have to worry about it. Because if you're standing on God's side, the Lord says, who's on the Lord's side? And he said, the, the, the old, um, there in the Old Testament, it says, who is on the Lord's side? You stand on the Lord's side, you're in the majority. Because you and God make the majority in your town, at your work, and your family. Amen. Romans 8.31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. So I say to you, Christian, keep standing. Even though you're the only one at your work, even though that you're the only one at your family, even though that you're the only one at your home and at school, uh, whatever the case may be, you keep standing. One and God make a majority. And with Micaiah, he stood on the words of God and he was able to, one man who stood against the multitude, hated and despised, cast down, cast into prison, but he was right and he told the truth. Boy, we can learn a lot from him. We can learn a lot from him. I say this in closing. Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. He's coming again, just like he said. Don't let the world lie to you and say, no, he's not coming. And the scoffers say he's not coming. He's coming. Amen. And uh, you say, what's going to happen to those ones that have not trusted him? They're going to go to a place called hell. I don't say that with a smile on my face or with joy in my heart. It's a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where no, where, well, a place I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. You know what the world says? The world tells people and, and they talk and they say, go to hell, go to hell. No, that's not what you want to do. That's what they wish on people. And somebody cuts them off in traffic, somebody gives them the wrong package or the wrong order at the restaurant, that's what they say to them. We say, go to heaven. Get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Get to know the Lord. Amen. And if you're not saved, um, you're going to go to a place called hell. and We don't want you to go there. Get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You may not like me saying that. It may upset you. And um, you say, why? Well, some other body or group or religion may have convinced you that you're okay by being sprinkled as a baby or being part of their church and uh, being on the, the attendance roll. All of those things can't save you. 
Helping little old ladies across the street can't save you. Your good works can't save you according to the Bible. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is in a person. Salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Get to know him. Would you call out to him today? Would you ask him to save you right now where you are? Why not get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and call out to him and ask him to save you? Don't reject the truth like Ahab did and in the end go to your uh, untimely death. You'll be damned and doomed just like Ahab was. I'll close with this. This is a song my wife will sing from time to time and I like it. I'll just read it to you because I'm not much of a singer, so I'll read it to you and let you think about it. It's called Be the One. In a world full of broken dreams where the truth is hard to find, for every promise that is kept, there are many left behind. Though it seems that nobody cares, it still matters what you do because there's a difference you can make, but the choice is up to you. Will you be the one to answer to his call? Will you stand when those around you fall, will you be the one to take his light into a darkened world? Tell me, will you be the one? Oh, sometimes it's hard to know who is right and what is wrong and where you are supposed to stand when the battle lines are drawn. There's a voice that is calling out for someone who's not afraid to be a beacon in the night to a world that's lost its way. There are still some battles that I might fight, I must fight from day to day. Yet the Lord provides the power for me to stand and say, I will be the one to answer to his call. I will stand when those around me fall. I will be the one to take his light into a darkened world. Yes, I will be the one. And I encourage you, be like Micaiah. Be the one man who stood against the multitude. Let's go to the Lord in order of prayer.